Well, he's been forecasting at King 5 for almost 38 years, but prior to that, he had another incredible career. Meteorologist Rich Marriott joins me now. Rich, you founded the Northwest Avalanche mm -hmm. Center 50 years ago. Right, this 1975. Yep. That was your winter job. That was back my winter job. In the That's 70s right. and 80s. Was, you had a summer job as well. Right, with seasonal work there, but yeah. for the My professor at the University of Washington, who I got my degree from, uh, who I was working with there, he also was a glaciologist and ran a research station on the Blue Glacier in the Olympics so since you... 1957. Oh. Yeah, and so he had all of his graduate students go up and spend some time for at least one summer. And I went up there and I fell in love with it. And he was getting close to retirement, so I took it over. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so you lived on the Blue Glacier on the Olympic Peninsula. During the summer months, yeah. During the summer. Which years? Uh, in 1976 through... Uh, 1987. And what yeah. did you do while you were up there? Uh, we d we did some skiing for one. <laughs> we skied around the glacier, doing a lot of telemarking. But we were measuring. Oh, there were a whole lot of different experiments that were done up there during that time period. But we were measuring the mass balance of the uh, glacier. Basically, how much snow, how much water it gets from snow in the winter, how much melts off in the summer, and that's basically to measure the health of the uh, glacier. Wow, incredible. And you lived in a ranger station, correct? Well, it was this, this station was built, the research station was built for the International Geophysical Year in 1957-58. And that's where it, they spent an entire year, including a winter there, which was a very crazy place to spend a winter because we had 100 mile an hour winds in the middle of summer up there. Wow. So it's the first thing storms encounter after they leave Japan is the Olympic Mountains. And logistically speaking, what is it like to live on a glacier? Uh, well, in the summertime, it's it's actually pretty warm, surprisingly. We yeah. lived in shorts most of the time. I see and, you in shorts here a lot. <laughs> yeah, and because it's hot on the snow, it really is. And uh, yeah, we would go out and do, do our work, and we'd come back and in the evening, you'd sit on the front porch, and you'd see the Pacific out in the distance, and straight of Juan de Fuca over your shoulder. It was hard to beat. We did a lot of building maintenance to keep the place in shape as part of that, but we did a lot of different measures. One of the experiments we had was from the EPA where they were measuring the air coming in off the Pacific because they thought it was perhaps the purest that they were going to find in the United States because it's coming in after a long trip across the ocean. But mostly we were measuring the health of the glacier, which had been retreating since the early 1900s. It had moved about a, lost about a half a mile's worth of ice uh, between 1900 and 1953. And we had some very heavy snowfalls in the early 70s. And because of that, in the, when I was up there, the current terminus had started to, to advance a little bit. But since then, it has been retreating. And it's probably lost, uh, oh, I don't know, I would guess uh, just uh, roughly about maybe 100 meters of, uh, from the terminus and a lot in terms of the thickness. We had that number yeah. a few minutes ago about how much has been lost. And let's talk about that change. So you were there in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. You most recently went back in 2012. Right. What does it look like when you can actually see the change? It's, I mean, there's the terminus, but then just the physical glacier itself to look at it, it's smaller. And there's a lot more rocks out there than it used to be. And the other thing we watch is where the snow line is on the glacier. And it's way up glacier really early in the season now. And part of that, our winters overall with climate change are getting warmer. So a lot of the precipitation that gets up there falls as rain rather than as snow. So it doesn't make any deposits in its account to get withdrawn during the summer. So summers are drier and warmer. Winters are warmer and wet. And it's not a good uh, equation for a glacier. And Rich, I want to ask you about big picture things. We're talking about a lifetime at this point, your lifetime of no. research that you've seen. But as we know, glaciers ebb and flow through thousands of years. What does what we're seeing right now, how does that play into the big picture of glaciers? Well, I mean, glaciers do come and go, ice ages come and go. And in this case, in the case of the Blue Glacier, it uh, actually disappeared around 4,000 years ago during a warm period, interglacial period, and probably came back about two to 3,000 years ago. And it's been pretty constant since then. And what we've uh, seen more recently, it is beginning to retreat. It could disappear. In fact, they're estimating that by 2070, most of the glaciers in the Olympics will be gone. Uh, which is, they do come and go. The thing that's different now is we rely on a lot of the stuff. I mean, uh, Seattle City Light estimates that 25% of their power generation in late summer comes from meltwater from glaciers. And so it's, good. the impacts on humans, even though glaciers come and go, humans are here using the resources, so the impacts are much greater because we need those resources to maintain our civilization. That makes a lot of sense. So. 
what what do you want people to know about the right now? I mean, is there hope for these glaciers, or what should people be doing right now? It's it's hard to know. It is not a good outlook because uh, we're not going to really be able to stop the warming that's taking place between now and you know later in the century when the glaciers may disappear. So we're going to have to adjust that they're not being around. I mean, there's a beauty loss, but there's also a practical loss in losing our glaciers. Mm. That's. It's a lot to take in. It is, definitely is. Rich, thank you so much. Any final thoughts for us today? Uh, as get out and enjoy them while they're there. That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That is uh, the big, the big message. As we wrap up our series, glaciers on thin ice. The message, message from researchers and Rich is clear. Our glaciers are melting at a record rate. The pace is only expected to accelerate. So right now, get out and enjoy them while you can. Thanks for being with us.